Hello and welcome to this IELTS Master Band 7 Plus vocabulary lesson. This lesson is lesson one and it's on family. So let's get started. Let's talk about the structure for this vocabulary course. My philosophy is that in order to really learn vocabulary, you need to know words in a deep way. So in this lesson, I've given you definitions with notes and example sentences, collocations, and collocation is a new word possibly. It means words that go together often. And finally, an action step to end each lesson. So each lesson in this vocabulary course will have words with definitions, notes, and example sentences a collocation chart or picture for these words, and at the end of each lesson there will be an action step. So let's take a look at the words for this lesson. Now again, the theme is family. For this lesson, the words are sibling, relative, adolescence, nurture, and relationship. You might know some of these words already, but the chances are that you will learn some new combinations or collocations with these words, or maybe a new example sentence that uses the word in a way you didn't know or you hadn't thought of before. Let's look at word number one, sibling. The definition is a brother or sister. This is quite simple, right? Sibling, as is noted, is often used instead of brother or sister in writing. It's also used that way in speech. Let's take a look at some example sentences. First, siblings can have a profound impact on a child's life. So brothers and sisters can have a profound impact on a child's life. And profound means big. I didn't have any siblings growing up, so I learned to be independent. This might be a sentence you say during an IELTS speaking interview. And last, in China, one of the effects of the one-child policy was that many children grew up without a sibling. So we use siblings with an S in the first two sentences, but we can also use it like in the last sentence with a, meaning one sibling, one brother or one sister. Next, let's look at collocations. To get started easy, we chose a word like sibling that doesn't have a lot of collocations. What does collocation mean? Collocation means a word or words that go together often. Sibling rivalry is a common collocation. That means you'll see these two words together, sibling and rivalry. What does sibling rivalry mean? Well, when you have a brother or sister that like to compete with each other in lots of different things, maybe in sports, maybe in eating food at the dinner table, maybe in business, or just something in life, when they always like to compete with each other, then it's a sibling rivalry. Got it? Great. Let's continue. Next is relative. A relative is a person in the same family or a family member. And some example sentences. With the rise of nuclear families, the amount of time spent with extended relatives has decreased. So we have nuclear families, this is like the parents and the children, and then extended relatives. Extended relatives would be relatives like aunts and uncles and cousins, maybe grandparents. The next sentence is, when I was younger, I used to spend a lot of time with my relatives while my parents were away on business. In this sentence, we use relatives to say, not parents, but family. 
And last, hiring relatives can create family problems if there are difficulties at work. And let's look at some collocations. Wow, here we have six different collocations. Now, there are many, many more collocations for each word, but for this course, I've chosen six of the most common collocations for this word. First is care for relative. Okay, to care for. For example, on weekends, I go to the hospital to care for my relatives. Just like you could say grandparents or aunt and uncle. To care for your relatives. Next is other relatives. I have my brother and sister, and then I have other relatives that live in the house as well. Distant relatives. Distant relatives are your family members that are far away from you, not in terms of how far away in the country they are, but from you in your family. So, for example, my mother's cousin's son could be an example of a distant relative. On the other side, close relative. Now, a close relative is someone that you have a close relationship with that's in your family. Elderly relative, someone who is older and your relative. And finally, visit relatives. Now, this is a common collocation. It's common to say, next year, I'm going to visit my relatives in Europe or something like that. Number three, adolescence. Adolescence. The definition of adolescence is the period between childhood and adulthood. And this means the teenage years. So if you look at the note, if we have adolescence with a T and an S, or adolescent without the S, it basically means teenager. So think 13 to about 19 years old could be adolescence. Let's say that one more time because it's a little bit difficult. Adolescence. And example sentences. Adolescence can be a difficult time both for the child and the parent. Very true. In regards to prison sentences, I believe that adolescents should be treated the same way as adults. And note, change CE at the end of the word to TS to describe people, not the period of time. So the first example sentence is the period of time, and the second example sentence is, is the person or the people. Collocations for adolescence. Well, we have early adolescence. Early adolescence is like 13, 14, 15 years old. During adolescence. And childhood and adolescence. Adolescence is a good comparison word for childhood. You have childhood, adolescence, adulthood. Next, nurture. The definition of nurture is to help someone or something develop and grow. And you can see the picture of the person nurturing the plant on the top right. Also, note the adjective form of nurture is nurturing. So let's look at some example sentences. First, nature versus nurture is a common topic among scientists. It discusses whether a person's life is mostly from his DNA, nature, or from life experiences and his environment, nurture. So this is an interesting sentence and an interesting topic. If you're interested in this, copy or type in nature versus nurture into Google or another search engine and take a look. Next sentence, growing up in a healthy and nurturing environment can prepare children for future success. Here we're using nurture in its adjective form, nurturing, next to environment. Collocations. We have nurture by someone or nurture by something and to nurture talent. So if a child is talented, 
Perhaps a coach will nurture their talent and help them become better at what they're doing. And nurture by someone, for example, the child was nurtured by their coach for many years. Number five, relationship. The definition of relationship is the way in which two people, groups, or countries behave towards each other or deal with each other. And it says two people, but really a relationship can be more than two people. And some example sentences. I have a good working relationship with my boss. Maintaining a strong relationship with your friends becomes more difficult later in life. The relationship between the police and local community has improved. Now, of course, you probably know relationship. The interesting thing about relationship is the collocations. First, we have relationship between. For example, a relationship between two people. Relationship with. For example, a relationship with your parents. A relationship with your family or with your boss. Next, establish a relationship. This means to make a relationship, to create a relationship. Next, a close relationship up on the top right. A close relationship. You have a good, a strong, a close relationship with a person. Next, a personal relationship. Personal relationship usually compares with work relationship. So if you develop a personal relationship with someone, then maybe you have a friendship with them. And last, a special relationship. I think you understand what this one means. So that's the five words for this lesson. Your action step for today is to use each word to write two sentences and post your sentences in the comments below. Be sure to use the collocations that I introduced whenever you can. It's good practice to use these collocations so that you can remember them and truly deeply understand these words. When it comes to your IELTS test, your speaking, or your writing, you'll choose the correct words to put together and it will really help your score. Good luck. And finally, thank you. If you'd like more IELTS practice, please visit our website at IELTSmaster.com. And if you'd like this free Task 2 ebook on the side, join our email list and we'll send it directly to you. You can download it and it has lots and lots of Task 2 writing topics. You can also connect with us on Facebook.com slash IELTSmaster site or subscribe below to our YouTube channel. And finally, what would you like to see next? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks so much. Have a great day.